we start? We're ready, Ronnie. Oh, okay. We're on. We're on. Okay. Good evening uh, to you all, especially to our council members and uh, some of our town staff, and to the public uh, at large who may be watching uh, via social media or other means. Uh, welcome to our June one um, council meeting. This is a regular scheduled meeting. And so uh, to begin this evening, as we usually always do, I'm going to ask Miss Gibson, our town clerk, if she will, to call the roll. Mayor Marchburn. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Berenger. Here. Councilmember Matthews. Here. Councilmember Dellinger. Here. Councilmember Singleton. Here. And Councilmember Vance. Here. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Obviously, we have a full slate of our council here. And again, I'd like to thank you for being here. Uh, as is our custom, uh, we open most all of our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation. And tonight, I'm going to call on Council Member uh, Elmo Vance, who will lead in uh, those uh, both of those items. Mr. Vance. Okay. okay. I pledge allegiance. To the flag, the flag, to the flag, the United States, United States of, America. of America, and to the Republic, to the Republic for which, which it stands, stand, one nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. All right. Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide our minds and our hearts as council members in the process of doing the will of the people, Father. We ask that you protect each and every one of the citizens in Ghana from very harm and danger. Father, we ask that you strengthen this country, God. Give us a clear focus as a country, as a state, and as a community, and as a town. Father, we ask that you give peace throughout and allow us to grow together in harmony, unity, and love. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Father, we ask that you protect the first responders, protect the citizens, guide them and lead them, Father. And it's in your most precious son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray and we say. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Council Member Vance. So, uh, Council and others, I refer you to our agenda. It's my intent to follow that uh, as indicated, unless there's any deviation when we get to the uh, uh, consent agenda. But the next item is uh, under the heading of petitions and comments. Uh, this portion of the meeting is to receive comments from the public on items not included in this agenda. And since our council is meeting virtually during the COVID-19 stay at home order, the town has provided an online form uh, with a link that uh, the public should be aware of as an alternative to speaking in person. Those interested in submitting comments have been advised that they should complete the form between 9 a.m. and approximately 2 p.m. on the date of the meeting. Those that prefer an offline option may call, and there's a number 984-233-2510 between the same hours. The comments shared during the meeting are included as part of the meeting minutes. Obviously, the council is interested in hearing concerns from the public, but they may not take action or deliberate on subject matters brought up during the petitions and comments segment. So uh, tonight um, we have uh, some comments uh, from the public that I'm going to share uh, for the record or at least summarize. Um, the first item, uh, and, and I will identify those uh, who, who made uh, these comments as well. Uh, we heard from uh, Ms. Uh, Nadima Zerlinga, forgive me if I mispronounced her last name, from Christy Coleman, and I also heard from um, a Miss Kayla Linder or Linder, L I N D E R. These three persons I will summarize briefly are addressing their concerns regarding the fact that uh, apparently the Timber Drive Elementary School here in Garner um, is, uh, is going to be uh, apparently transitioning to a traditional school, at least for just this year or perhaps any other year. And so uh, the, the three persons I just identified all um, express their concern that, that, uh, that they are opposed to that. I won't read each one in detail, but as we usually do when we have 
a topic that uh, several people are expressing the same views on. Uh, that th those those three persons are are against that. I uh, did receive uh, another uh, comment from a Miss Sandy Heckman, uh, who lives here in Garner, <clears throat> and Miss Heckman is sort of taking a different view. She indicates that she's excited about uh, the single track uh, moving to a traditional uh, calendar year school. So uh, those are the two uh, general uh, views that were expressed to council tonight. Um, I might just say in general, as I said previously, we don't take these items up for now. We refer these to staff. Obviously, the town has very limited uh, uh, involvement with uh, decisions that the school system makes. But uh, at any rate, uh, uh, Mr. Town Manager, those are usually just uh, received uh, in your office for any further uh, action that is needed. Is that correct, sir? That's correct, and we can forward those on to our um, our relevant school um, board member, um, Ms. Monica Hostler Johnson, and um, get those to her, and um, we can you know, refer to those and do do what she would like to do. With this. Okay, thank you. And actually, before we finish this this item, excuse me, did somebody want to make a comment? Yeah, this is Fred. Uh, could you please just make clear that uh, these comments submitted by the citizens are part of the record. They are available for a complete read by the council or any citizen. Um, I just don't want you to be uh, worried about mischaracterizing or missummarizing. Okay. These are public comments and anybody can read their entirety. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baggett, our attorney. Um, I do have one other one that's on a, a different subject uh, under petitions and comments. And so um, uh, I'll take a moment uh, maybe to just go through this one. Uh, it's not too lengthy. It's from a Sarah uh, Vera, D-R-I-A. Um, for comments, given the unrest that has fallen across the country in response to the unjust killing of George Floyd, Fiona Taylor and Amon Aubrey and countless others, I would like to discuss, uh, excuse me, like discussion of what Garner is doing proactively to ensure that our black neighbors feel safe from police and racial violence. Specifically, I would like to know how our police department rates with 10 major policy solutions to police violence as suggested by Campaign Zero, and there's a link listed there. A particular interest to me are what mechanisms we have in place or should consider for community oversight. She thanks us for addressing these concerns. Uh, and again, to this, uh, to this petitioner, we will make the same comments, those that will be referred to our town manager um, and uh, Subsequent uh, comment or commentary uh, would be made at a later time. Anything else you could or say on that, Mr. Town Manager? Okay. No, not this time. I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, no, that's fine. I'll okay, take a look at those and uh, check with the police department on how how we can respond to that. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, those are the only comments that I have received. Uh, I, I, I'm supposing there are not any other for us to consider at this time. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Council, uh, the next item on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Um, I will entertain a motion at this time that we adopt the agenda as you have it before you. So move. Okay. Second. Moved by Mr. Vance and seconded by Mr. Matthews. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting the agenda, would you please say aye? Aye. Aye. Is there any opposition? No, and there is none. So uh, thank you very much. Moving along with the agenda, uh, under the item of presentations, it's my privilege this evening to uh, read a proclamation uh, relating to the Garner Magnet High School class of 2020. Uh, and for those uh, uh, students out there who may be listening, a personal word of congratulations, and I'm pleased to be able to share with you uh, the proclamation, and we'll have some other comments to make about your class probably a little bit later on in the agenda. But um, let me share this with you. Whereas the Garner 
Magnet High School class of 2020 has spent 13 years preparing for college and careers which will allow them to reach their lifetime goals. And whereas the Garner Magnet High School class of 2020 has experienced the loss of prom, a traditional graduation and other milestones seniors anticipate and cherish. And whereas the Garner Magnet High School class of 2020 missed the opportunity to celebrate their last in the sense of a last game, last award ceremony, last concert, last day with teachers and last day with friends. And whereas the Garner Magnet High School class of 2020 has dutifully sacrificed the high points of their senior year for the safety of their community and state. Whereas the Garner Magnet High School class of 2020 should be celebrated for their achievements, dedication and perseverance in their pursuit of education. Now, therefore, I, Ken Marston, Mayor of the Town of Garner, North Carolina, dedicate June 6, 2020 as a day to honor and celebrate the Garner Magnet High School Class of 2020. Furthermore, the Mayor and Town Council urges all citizens to acknowledge and recognize the perseverance of the Class of 2020 for their many accomplishments and academic achievements. And uh, that has a town seal on it and the signature of the mayor. I'm proud to uh, to make that proclamation and we will be getting that uh, probably to your school uh, principal. And again, class, congratulations. And we'll touch on uh, another uh, recognition for you a little bit later on. OK, um, council, we are now at the point of our agenda where uh, you should consider approval of the consent agenda. There are three items on there. Uh, does any council member have any reason to uh, need to uh, draw an item off for uh, any further discussion? If not, I will be happy to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, motion properly made and seconded by Ms. Behringer and seconded by Mr. Singleton. Any other discussion, questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Is there any opposition? And there is none, so the vote is unanimous and the consent agenda is approved. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is uh, public hearings. And so um, the following public hearing is to receive comments from the public on the FY 2020 recommended budget. Um, as part of our publication of this agenda, we indicated that comments could be submitted to an online form with a link that, uh, that I won't uh, read the essence of that, but uh, it's available to the public. I should also note that those that prefer an offline object, excuse me, option may call telephone number 984-233-2510. So because we're having this as a virtual meeting, should be noted that comments will be received for a period of 24 hours from the conclusion of the public hearing. So for those of you who may not have had an opportunity, uh, the opportunity is available <laughs> for the next 24 hours for comments that you would care to make. Mr. Baggett, did I cover that OK for the purpose of our virtual meeting? Yes, sir. <clears throat> OK, thank you, sir. So uh, this item, uh, 2020 recommended budget, uh, we will hear from Mr. Mike Franks, our budget and special projects manager, who will uh, who will lead the preliminary discussion and comments. Mr. Franks. Mr. Franks, are you are you with us? <coughs> I think he's muted. Yeah, I think uh, we we see we see the item on the screen, uh, Mike, but we don't hear you. Mr. Franks, can you uh, can you uh, make sure your um, audio is is turned on? Okay. Um, yeah, it seems like he's having technical difficulty. We will have somebody um, contact him and 
see what we can do. Hello, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Oh, there yeah. he goes. Sorry. Uh, sure. My headphones were not working for some reason. I apologize for that. Um, I've had a few of these and that's the first time. So I apologize. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, tonight, we're going to do the second presentation um, or second public hearing for the FY20, FY21 recommended budget. Um, it's a high level overview to give the community a um, sense of what we have included in the recommended budget. I would point out again that we've already had one of these. Tomorrow, we will actually have a virtual session where folks will be able to participate on fakes, Facebook Live and provide comments. Um, and then council will have an additional session, a budget work session on the third um, that folks can participate in. So with that, I will provide an overview. Um, so we're gonna discuss the budget process, kind of where we started and where we ended up, I'll review the recommended budget and then discuss further date, dates. Um, so at the beginning of the process, the department's provided a current year operating budget and a five-year summary of significant items. So the current year operating budget is basically things they would need within the current budget year. And the five-year summary of significant items would be things like positions or large capital items or things that are big ticket items that would have a dramatic impact on the budget. Departments review their operating requests with the budget team. So we had individual meetings with departments to discuss their request on um, just to see kind of where they were coming from and what they needed. I would point out that the initial budget forecast estimated the baseline shortfall of approximately $1 million. Hey, that Mike, stop for a minute. Mike, can we yes, get everyone to mute their mic? There's a lot of feedback. Let's see if we can isolate that. All right, continue. Um, so we initially had a shortfall um, projected of $1 million that increased to over $3 million based on the impact of COVID-19. So that was primarily in sales tax and um, park fees. Um, so the things that folks are just not able to do when they're um, forced to stay in their homes. So that was a pretty big impact on our town's operations. Um, so based on this, the budget team met with individual council members to discuss options for how we want to handle the budget. And based on these meetings, staff prepared a worst case scenario budget. So the worst case being that COVID-19 would continue to remain an issue throughout the budget process into the next budget year, which starts July 1, um, and that it would continue to impact our revenues and our operations. So you can see on the budget summary of revenues, you can see the property taxes are increasing um, almost a little bit over $2 million, and that is based on the tax rate. Um, you can see permits and fees, a slight increase based on um, continued growth and development, um, sales tax and other taxes, a significant decrease based on um, sales tax going down a significant amount. We've projected almost a 19% decrease there. Um, and the other one I would point out are fees for service and interest earnings where we have significant decreases based on for fees for service, the um, decrease in park revenues and interest earnings, a decrease in um, um, investment earnings within the town. We also have the budget summary of expenditures. So this is a summary of all the different departments within the town, um, their current budget, um, and then what they added within their request and what we have recommended. So an additional summary, um, the recommended budget includes a tax rate of 48.71 cents for $100 of assessed value. Um, that's a decrease of 7.29 cents from last budget year. However, I would point out it's 2.5 cents above the revenue neutral tax rate of 46.21. So in effect, it does have an impact on the average buyer resident. Um, it's a decrease from last year, but based on the revenue neutral rate, which is designed to capture, um, basically allow the town to bring in the same amount of revenue that they brought in the previous year, um, it would be an increase. I would point out, however, that at this rate, Garner is projected to be the most affordable locality in Wake County. Um, we had previously said that Garner would be the second most affordable, but the town um, below us has come out with their recommended budget and included a larger, larger increase than um, we had shown. So it's a, we are now projected to be the most affordable and the tax rate that we've recommended would result in a $4.80 monthly increase on average. Um, in addition to balance the budget, we took a variety of different measures. We included reductions of almost $498,000, a 33% cut in merit pay, 
$120,000 reduction in resurfacing. And we used one-time balances of one point almost $48 million to cover one-time items. In addition, we only funded one of 42 decision packages. Decision packages are items that are um, new requests, so new things that departments feel like they need to uh, continue their operations. And that was a uh, result in unfunded decision packages of almost 2.5 million. And that included 20 new positions. And the only thing that we did fund the decision packages was a school resource officer, Carter, on high school. And that was um, to get the, um, just to ensure student safety. So a thing we looked at as part of this budget, we've prepared a five-year um, budget to look at future year requirements and the recommended tax rate we believe would position us to address future growth. Despite the team, we continue to see growth within the inspections department. They continue to perform a significant number of inspections and the planning department continues to review a significant number of residential and multifamily apartment developments. Um, based on this growth, based on population growth, the town anticipates that there will be additional positions and operating requirements that will be required to be funded in the future. So these are items like police and fire positions to um, maintain the current service level, ultimately park positions to provide additional um, services to residents um, for amenities. And then it's also the items um, planning and um, inspections that would be required to just manage that growth. So there's a significant number of requirements that would need to be funded based on this growth. We also have a very robust CIP, almost $96.1 million. And um, there are a variety of operating adjustments that will be required to staff and operate some of these facilities as we construct them. For example, a fire station um, is included in the CIP, but there's also a large requirement to fund the positions that will be associated with that. Um, and when we looked at the five-year model, um, as I indicated, there's insufficient funding at the revenue neutral rate to address these requirements. Even with the recommended rate um, being slightly higher, we're still gonna be challenged in future years to address all these requirements. Um, so that was the rationale, a large part of the rationale for the increase. So in terms of future dates, as I mentioned, um, for today we have the um, second public hearing to offer residents an opportunity to provide input on the budget. Tomorrow at 2 p.m., the town will host a virtual public hearing to offer residents an opportunity to provide input on the budget. So we'll have a Facebook live stream. I'll provide a brief presentation and then residents can um, provide their feedback on the budget and we'll try to answer their questions as best as possible. Then the third town council will have a second budget work session. Um, residents are welcome to attend to get a better understanding of the budget. Um, this will be the second session where we hopefully are able to um, come to some conclusions on the final um, budget package. And then on the 16th, it's the proposed budget adoption. So with that, I'll take any questions council has on the um, recommended budget. Okay, okay, thank you thank very you much, very much uh, uh, Michael. Michael. Um, um, am I getting am feedback? I getting feedback? Um, thank you again, and for also reminding others uh, of the opportunity uh, uh, both uh, tomorrow uh, and also on June the 3rd as we will continue to be offering forums for ways to discuss the budget. Um, at this point, I'm going to open the, uh, the discussion open. Um, we'll not necessarily uh, start with a specific council member, but if there's one who uh, desires or has a specific question or comment you'd like to make, we'll start from there and make sure every council member has an opportunity to, um, to speak uh, and speak on several occasions as we usually always do. Um, I would just quickly observe that uh, this obviously has been a very challenging budget year. I think our budget team has uh, worked hard to bring to us um, uh, what I believe is a reasonable budget. Um, it's, uh, uh, it certainly doesn't include uh, many new things, many new positions, but we know as a town we're growing and there are any number of items that uh, we can't put off forever. So Michael, thanks to you. But at this point, uh, council member, uh, who, would, uh, who would like to uh, uh, comment or ask a question? 
Mr. Mayor, uh, Phil here. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Mike, what we ever decide, and it might be in here, we've just talked about so much with all of this uh, particular budget on fund balance. What we're going to do with that, if anything, what was to what what is the final recommendation from staff on that? So the final recommendation from staff was to include fund balance of um, um, number um, one point four seven million dollars for various items. So that would be the final recommendation. And that was primarily uh, vehicle requirements and IT requirements. So some one time items that are in the budget, um, and that was um, to use fund balance to address you know these one-time requirements based on the fact that this is a pretty unprecedented situation and we felt like it was an appropriate use of um, fund balance given that it's generally for an emergency thank you sir okay uh others or i'll just be happy to go down my list and we can circle back as we need to uh miss barringer uh do you care to weigh in at this point no sir not at this point okay uh, Mr. Dellinger. Uh, yeah, just one quick question and a comment. Um, I know I think last month we approved uh, hazard pay for the duration of the time the operations center was open. And I believe we had talked about uh, kind of having a time limit for the end of this fiscal year. Uh, has there been any accounting for the next fiscal year of extending that hazard pay? I don't remember, I don't remember seeing, that, seeing in that in our work session. Work session. There, there has not been at this point. Can we make, can we sure, make sure that by that Wednesday, Wednesday we have, we have that projected into the budget or at least have it have available as something we need to consider? Yes, sir. Uh, my other comment is really just uh, to commend the staff on putting together this budget and its various iterations and such trying circumstances um, and kind of gone all out like everyone else has in the community. So thank you so much. Okay, uh, Mr. Singleton. Uh, nothing at this time, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thanks, sir. And Mr. Vance. Nothing at this time, Mr. Mayor. Okay, um, I'll make one last circle back in just a moment. Um, Mr. Manager, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but uh, you've already had opportunity to comment, and I know you work closely with the budget team, but if uh, if you have any other observations you'd like to make, I'd be happy to hear from you at this point. Oh, I certainly want to thank the staff for all the hard work, all the department heads, and all everybody town of Garner in the work they did in uh, bringing this budget to fruition with all of the tough and difficult choices we had to make. Um, and, and yet looking forward and trying to maintain uh, excellent service delivery and those type of things. So just want to thank the budget team for all the hard work and the council for your support. Um, I did want to comment on the hazard pay just as a FYI that I think had an ending date uh, somewhere in the middle of June. I was trying to find it. I can't remember exactly, but we'll be bringing something back to you um, maybe by the next meeting to extend that. And then in addition to that, uh, Council Member Dellinger, we will look at considering something um, beyond July the 1st. We just wanted to make that note clear that we will be bringing something back for extension for this year also. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure um, that it's included in the in the budget because I, I don't remember seeing it when we'd had our last budget session. So, thank you. Okay. okay, thank you, sir, very much. Okay. Um, at this point, Council, I believe uh, if uh, any of the Council members that uh, asked for any comments you had, maybe you did not at the time, uh, I'll just see if there are any other questions, comments you care to make. Uh, otherwise, we will move along. I got just one additional one, Mr. Mayor, and of course, everything else I can wait till we get together and really discuss okay. it. But we had kicked this around uh, and thoroughly understanding talking to all the staff and many of my fellow council members, uh, I know we were taking a sharp microscope to this, just this time, one time on our contrib contribution to a revenue savings plan. And uh, 
I know we tossed that around a little bit, talked about it. Uh, if we didn't contribute this time, we could work it out to our uh, increments or on the backside, uh, the times being what they are. Uh, you know, uh, is that something we can take a look at for this one time only, uh, the contribution to that uh, on this budget? No, because, because it affects our credit rating, because this is what is used to go to the bond council and local government commission that we have funding available as a revenue stream to help pay for any future bond projects. And if you dip into it one time, they'll say you may dip into it again. So that's not a, uh, uh, a good habit to get into. And I understand where you're coming from, Phil. But uh, I believe Michael told us at the last budget meeting, because of what has happened, uh, there will be no growth this year on, on the, uh, uh, the conditions of, of that monies that are added. Is that correct, Michael? That is correct, and I would just add that it would also impact our debt capacity in the future years. So as we prepare for a future bond referendum, if we don't make the contribution this year, it would reduce the amount we'd be able to borrow to fund capital projects. I understand. I just wanted to make sure I, I, I grasp what we're talking about there. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Point of clarification. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Uh, okay. Uh, Ms. Beringer or uh, Ms. Uh, um, excuse me, Mr. Vance. Uh, I'll come back to you, Gray, as well. Either one oh, of you have any? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll hold mine until Wednesday. I'm good. Okay. I'm well, fine. Good. Thank you. Ms. Beringer? I'll wait till Wednesday as well. Okay. All right. And Mr. Single, I know you had a chance to respond to Mr. Matthews, but uh, any, any other... Uh, Comment or question you have, sir? No, uh, sir. I'll wait to Wednesday also. Okay. Everybody's deferring to Wednesday. Um, Michael, uh, at this point, any any uh, other summary uh, observations? Yeah, Not at this point. I look forward to uh, hopefully interacting with the public tomorrow at 2 p.m. on Facebook Live to um, answer questions about the budget. I think we have the council at 9 a.m. on Wednesday to um, hopefully finalize the budget. Okay, um, so council, unless I hear from uh, any other persons, I'm going to go ahead and close out uh, this uh, hearing. And obviously we will uh, uh, resume on Thursday. And then of course there will be, I think what's referred to as a pop-up. Is that right, Michael, tomorrow? Yeah, it's a virtual pop-up town virtual. hall. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you. All right. All right. Then Mayor, the uh, the budget, the next budget meeting is on Wednesday, if that's what you were referring to. Excuse also. me, you're exactly right. Yeah, on June the 3rd. That will start at uh, in the morning time. Uh, 8 30, 9 o'clock. Right? Not a.m. The official uh, visit will start at 9, nine. Run until approximately 12 o'clock or so, or until council has finished. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, Fred, I need to officially close this public hearing. We will close this public hearing and move to the next item on our agenda. And I will okay. recognize. I will I'm recognize. sorry. Is that in order for it to stay open for comment yeah. period? I'm sorry, I was muted. That's proper. That's no, quite you don't all right. close it. You announce that it's open for another 24 hours that's at right. which point it is closed. Thank you, sir. Okay, so that's so noted. Open for 24 hours. Uh, and I was in error in seeking to say that it was closed now. Thank you. Um, we will move to item I on the agenda under new and old business. Um, Amazon operations schedule update and revised request. This is a carryover from uh, uh, item we discussed back on our May 19 meeting. Uh, and I'll recognize Mr. John Hodges, Assistant Town Manager, who will uh, lead us in uh, this uh, process and introduce others who may be involved as well. John. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening. Um, as the mayor said, we had a previous request that came to you at your May 19th meeting from Hillwood, the developer of the Amazon project, along with Amazon, uh, requesting for a change in one of the conditions for uh, their project to allow them to move in and begin operating the project prior to road improvements being completed. 
Uh, at the time, council asked for us, uh, asked Amazon to and Hillwood to consider coming back with a, a date certain for completion of the project um, and some type of um, of method of enforcing that. Um, Amazon and Hillwood have come back with a proposal that is included in your packet um, that did include uh, a completion date as well as a proposed penalty for late delivery. One of the other items discussed by council was the desire to have input from the citizens and the neighbors along Jones Sausage Road. Uh, to that end, Hillwood sent out, mailed out 365 letters. I think we added a few after that 365 counts, so another six or so maybe, um, that were sent out uh, by Hillwood to residents along the corridor. Uh, we allowed them to use a form, much like our public comment form, to receive comments. There was also a number that folks could call with a voice recording. We did compile all of those uh, responses that we received uh, at Council's direction. That was extended to be stay open until 5 p.m. last night. Um, earlier today, we sent a compilation of all of those comments. There were 18 comments received via the form. There were two voicemails that were forwarded to Council, and there was at least there was one email that we forwarded to Council on behalf of the of the resident who submitted it. And I believe Council may have uh, received. Uh, emails directly from people regarding this issue as well. Um, I don't want to, to misspeak, but I think you could summarize most of the requests that we heard um, as in being in a similar vein um, of asking Council to remember the, the um, discussion that was had when the site, the project was originally approved um, and to uh, consider keeping those requirements in place. Um, and so that is uh, this proposal is coming back to you tonight for additional consideration. Um, we have Scott Martin with Hillwood on the phone um, and I'll let him, um, I'll turn it over to him and let him introduce any other members of his or Amazon's team that may be on the call with us tonight. Uh, and I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. I think Joe Stallings, our economic development director, is also on the call if there's questions that he can answer. Okay, thank you, John. And so we'll hear from Scott now, I believe. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Um, I've got Jessica Bro with Amazon as well as Adam Comptis with with Amazon um, on on the line as well. Um, okay. We we appreciate your willingness to consider our request. Um, as it was discussed in the last meeting, Hillwood has been delayed at multiple points throughout the design, permitting, bidding, and construction phases of the road improvement project. We're currently being delayed by utilities that are hurting our ability to make progress on the road work. We're here to request that the requirement for the offsite road work completion be amended to allow for building occupancy, provided we can meet the conditions outlined in the memo dated May 26, 2020. This is the only item that we're asking for modification. We understand that all base building and life safety requirements will be complied with prior to any issuance of a TCO. And we're not asking for any flexibility on those items. We will also not request the TCO until both the town and Hillwood and our contractor um, feel comfortable with proceeding. Based on feedback of the previous town council meeting, we've amended some of the previous conditions offered, as well as added several to meet the concerns of the council. In addition to the early installation of turn lanes, additional traffic signals, staggered shift schedule and traffic mitigation measures offered at the last meeting, we're proposing a date certain completion of September 30th, 2020, a penalty that the town can enforce if the roadway is not complete by that date and an increased communication plan to keep the impacted residents along Jones Sausage Road informed on progress or upcoming changes in traffic routing. I wanna let the residents know that we're equally as frustrated with this process and the progress that we have made. It's never been our intention to, for this to drag out the way that it has, but unfortunately we've been delayed by factors outside of our control. We continue to be fully committed to this project and according to information that we've received from the utilities, we believe the September 30th, 2020 date is achievable. The roadway is gonna be in its final condition will be four lanes, two southbound and two northbound with a full median with brakes for turn lanes into the facility. Temporarily, however, it'll be two lanes with some bump outs for turn lanes. And then that will, will kind of morph into a, kind of a three full lane road with a, with a center turn lane um, before it gets to the final four lane plus a median configuration. 
the proposed measures that we're, we're we've, we've offered in, the, in these conditions will allow traffic to flow more freely while we're competing completing the road work than as it currently sits. The proposed temporary signal at Calabar will be installed and operational by June 21, and the other mitigation measures will certainly help traffic along Jones Sausage Road, especially during rush hour. Please know that this traffic mitigation plan was carefully and thoughtfully prepared with the Town of Garner residents in mind. It includes input and requests from the Town of Garner staff, as well as the NTDOT. We hope you'll find our con conditions acceptable. The traffic inconvenience associated with, with us completing this road work will be temporary. We're 100% committed to completing this work as quickly as possible, and we have every intention to complete the work earlier than September 30th. I believe Jessica Burrow with Amazon has a few words she'd like to say, so I want to turn it over to her at this point. Hello, good evening, Council, Mayor and Council. Thank you again for your time. Um, appreciate the opportunity to, to be able to discuss this again with you all. Just certainly from the Amazon perspective, want to echo Hillwood's commitment to completing this road work and, and certainly providing a state-of-the-art facility um, from an Amazon Fulfillment Center standpoint in Garner. Um, we are working very hard and have been and certainly appreciate Jessica, can you hear me? We have temporarily lost uh, your audio. Okay, we still are not uh, hearing from Jessica at this point. Um, Scott was in, well, I was gonna say, was the other person from Amazon wanting to speak? Perhaps we could go to that person, Is that a possibility? I don't know if Adam has any any comments beyond what Jessica was going to uh, to mention. Okay. Um, what I'm inclined to do at this point is until we can get Jessica back uh, with hey, us. This is Jessica. I called okay. in from my phone. Unknown I'm participant sorry, is now joining. Technical difficulties there, so my apologies. Okay, proceed, uh, Jessica. I'm. <laughs> Maybe you were essentially recall where you were in your presentation. I don't remember the last few words or whatever, but uh, proceed. No worries. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. So just certainly was echoing our, our commitment to the project and continuing to work with Hillwood um, to find a resolution that certainly satisfies the council's concerns. We, we absolutely respect the, the concerns of Garner residents um, and have worked very, diff very hard with the town of Garner to come up with these resolutions that Hillwood's presented to you all this evening um, as part of the memo to the council. We have, you know, certainly Amazon's commitment is to providing the best experience possible for Garner residents because those residents will be our associates. And so we want to work with the town on a resolution that satisfies everyone's concerns, but then also gives us an opportunity to, to provide, you know, state-of-the-art facility in the community and, and an opportunity for hiring individuals. Um, we have historically worked with communities across the state of North Carolina um, from both a monetary and in-kind donation standpoint to charities and schools, and certainly would be excited to have the opportunity to partner with Garner in that way as well. Um, and then just a, a final comment in regards to hiring for this facility. So assuming we're able to reach a resolution with the council for the coupling the road work completion from the completion of the, the certificate of occupancy or the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, we're prepared to begin hiring events um, and extending offers to associates within the next few weeks. Um, and certainly would be very excited to do that. I know our team has been working closely with Joe Stallings over the last couple of weeks to do informational sessions um, for residents that uh, would be interested in working at our facility. And so we certainly are looking forward to an opportunity to take that to another level um, in terms of some actual hiring events and, and making um, offers to associates to work in our, our facility there. So again, just appreciate the council's time um, in entertaining this. Apologies for my technical difficulties here, um, but certainly we'll stay on the line and, and happy to answer and entertain any questions from the council. Okay. Thank you very much, Jessica. And um, if if 
It's Adam, I believe. Do, do, do you care to make any comments? Or if not, we will go to the next segment. Yeah, hello, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity. I, I don't have any further comments at this time. OK, thank you very much. Um, I'll just uh, make a couple of observations. Um, during this uh, during this process, I'll call it that we have have gone through. Uh, it's been my privilege to sit in and participate in a in at least a couple of meetings uh, with uh, Hillwood and or Amazon. And um, um, I think we respectfully both understand the uh, the uh, circumstance we find ourselves in. Obviously, the town of Garner has residents who are very much concerned about the uh, traffic issue out there and uh, those residents who live there feel as though this town made a, uh, a pledge to them uh, that, um, you know, we would hold off on the uh, CO until the roadway was completed. Uh, that certainly would be the preferred and I think still is, but I won't speak for the council, but um, uh, we, uh, we're excited that Amazon is here. We wish the circumstances for the opening uh, could have gone uh, smoother uh, even up until this point in time. So um, having made those comments, um, uh, John, unless uh, you or Joe uh, wants to uh, uh, weigh in further, I'm going to go to my council members and allow them to speak or ask questions. Uh, no, sir, nothing further from staff, but we're here for questions if uh, needed. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, Council, you've received the information that John alluded to. You've heard the presentations here. Uh, all of you heard from uh, various uh, folks, I'm sure. So uh, I'm going to start the either question comments area, and I'll ask you to be fairly concise, uh, but I won't uh, try to censor anybody. Uh, and so we'll start uh, with uh, maybe Mr. Vance, if he's, uh, if he's ready for any comments or questions. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Mayor, I need a few minutes to, to gather my thoughts uh, based upon what was told to me just now and uh, the information that was provided to me by John. Uh, I would uh, appreciate if you take a go to another okay. council okay. person. Sure, not a, not a problem. Sure enough. Um, Mr. Singleton, I will go to next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you know, I pretty much emphatically stated how I felt at our last meeting and still feel that way. The concern. Uh, a, a, another concern is that they guaranteed that the road will be done by September 30th. That's 122 days from today or four months. Let's go back to February 1st, which is actually moving to January because February is a short month. So the end of January till today, think how far along that was. And the residents would have to put up with that, plus other people traveling on, on the road. So that's, that's my concern. I'm sorry they had construction delays. We've had construction delays. We know all about issues with some of the utility companies, including AT&T, which they're having trouble with. But the condition was up front. That's what we told the citizens. The road had to be improved before the facility opened. And I'll stand by that, by that condition. OK, Mr. Singleton, thank you, sir. Um, um, Mr. Matthews. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, and uh, uh, this has been quite a conversation. But just for the benefit of maybe those that are listening online, maybe possibly hearing some of this first time, with the utilities, obviously that was the setback. What is the proposed time that the utilities think they'll have their uh, utilities move so construction can start on the road? And I also may not be anybody that's prepared to answer. Good thank you, uh, Councilman. Yeah, thank you, Councilman Matthews. Um, We've had conversations with the utilities. Uh, they actually, um, the the main utility that has our uh, our biggest obstruction um, it has started, or it will be starting tomorrow. Um, they will they have committed to having the west side of uh, Jones Sausage Road cleared um, by July one, um, and uh, and then the east side of of Jones Sausage Road clear of obstructions by August one. Um, so that's that's really what we we're basing our our September 30th schedule off of. Okay. Anything else, uh, Phil? Not right now. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Beringer. Uh, yes, I just have one question. Um, if the extension, the temporary uh, CO is granted, 
what would be the actual start date of operations? Uh, Jessica or Scott, uh, maybe Jessica, huh? Got it. Yes, hi, this is Jessica. So um, right now our anticipated start date of operations is June the 21st. Um, that could, you know, fluctuate some as we gauge how we can get equipment into the facility and things like that, but we are working towards the June 21st date. So you anticipate that you could hire enough people to start actually uh, operating by June 21st. Between, between now and June 21st, you could hire enough staff to be operational. Yes, ma'am. So typically our, um, you know, we have started with informational sessions. So we are starting to get the word out about the facility opening. Um, and then our hiring events, you know, assuming we have a clear path forward for decoupling the road work from the certificate of occupancy, we could start hiring events, you know, pretty much this week or, or early next um, in order to, to start getting folks ramped up. And then also just as a reminder to the council, we are ramping up over a 10 week time period. So that hiring, you know, our, our hiring will increase um, as the ramp up schedule picks up. Okay, okay. Any, anything else from you, Ms. Beringer? Just one, one more question. At what point, time, what point in time do you think that you would be fully operational as far as all of the uh, people you tend, intend to employ? Yes, ma'am. So the, the first 10 weeks of ramp up, um, we're expecting that to be complete by the end of August. Um, so that August 29th time frame uh, would be when we would expect to be fully operational from our initial hiring standpoint. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. I will go to Mr. Dellinger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Um, I only have a couple of comments right now before I think I'll give other council members a chance to say some things. Um, one, just appreciative of um, Amazon and Hillwood being receptive to some of the feedback we had at our last council meeting. Um, since that time, having gotten the feedback from the residents around the facility and, and talking with some of the council members, um, I have a lot more apprehension than I previously did about about this. Um, one, because I think it it sets a very precarious precedent for the town um, from an economic development standpoint and from a quality of life standpoint, because it sends a signal that we will change our minds. And there's that's not to say we can't be flexible um, in this instance. We'll see how that works. But I think it's a, it's a very dangerous precedent. Of, uh, it weakens your negotiating position. You might get the deal you want on the front end, but if they know they can change it on the back end, um, it's, it's not a good position for the town. Uh, in that vein, you know, I, a little, again, taken aback, given we're having these discussions right now about issuing this TCO and changing the, the terms that, that are very firm that, you know, there's this uh, springboard almost already into hiring with this presumptive notion that, that it will begin on the 21st. And it may, it may not, but I think, again, it sets me, it gives me pause um, with regards to, I think, the earnestness with which uh, one of our corporate partners uh, takes the matter that before council and the citizens of Garner. That said, I have a, a list of issues. One of them is, uh, and I won't go through all of them right now, the, the first two. One, we have a severe budget issue in not just the town, but the state. Uh, the DOT last week announced they were laying off about 9,000 workers statewide and about 2,300 within in the county. And I would like to have some notion on what's left on the road construction project and what elements of that may or may not be impeded by capacity issues at DOT. Okay. Um, 
Did you care to offer anything else at this point, Mr. Dellinger? That's my question. I, oh, I, I, I want somebody to answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not sure who can we, answer that, but we've I, been. I, yeah, this this is Scott Martin. We've been working um, very closely with DOT. Um, we were on weekly calls with with these guys with the, with their inspector out there. Um, we've had no indications that uh, there's any any sort of concern on their part about being able to properly staff this. Um, while it is being publicly funded, it is being privately built. So, um, you know, between ourselves and our road work contractor, um, we do not have any uh, staffing or manpower issues. Thank you. My other question, I guess, is for Amazon. And again, one of the issues, another thing that gives me pause is Amazon is positioned right now to become the largest employer in the town. We are in the middle of a pandemic, and from what I read, uh, the, Amazon has had multiple issues with regards to COVID-19 in a lot of its facilities, not a majority, not even close to majority, but in several of them. And so my question is, what kind of assurances and information and precautions is Amazon going to be taking as it employs 1,500 and then up to 3,000 workers through the course of this year, and what kind of commitment is it going to make to certain precautions and guidelines, and what kind of commitments is it going to make to disclosures for the safety of our residents when it comes to COVID-19? Sure. So this is Jessica. I'd be happy to talk about that. So. We certainly have worked very hard. Um, safety of our associates is our first and foremost priority. And so we have, you know, from providing PPE to our employees, hand washing stations, increase the cleaning of our facilities. Um, we've done over 150 different process improvements um, since the time of COVID-19 so that we were able to, you know, respond as, as conditions changed around the pandemic. If, if you recall in those early days, it was, new information on almost a daily basis. And so we were, you know, continuing to respond to those concerns and make adjustments in the way that these facilities operated. Um, we are conducting thermal scanning of employees as they enter the facility um, to make sure that, you know, we are not people that have a temperature or ill are not working. Um, as well as uh, during the time of, you know, the pandemic increased pay. Um, so we increased our, our average minimum wage, our starting wage, it's $15 an hour. We increased that wage to $17 an hour across the network um, and, you know, would have have supported our employees, you know, in that way as well. So certainly have those same plans to continue protecting our associates, not only in Garner, but across the entire delivery network um, as we work, you know, continue to work through things related to the pandemic. And what kind of commitments could would the town have about the prompt and timely disclosure of cases as reported to the local health authorities with the county. Yes, yeah, so we're absolutely working with jurisdictions and health departments across the network as we learn of COVID cases in our facilities um, and, and would do that in Garner as well. Um, so working not only to notify, to notify associates uh, that may have come in contact with an individual that, would, that has COVID-19 or is diagnosed with COVID-19, but then also, again, working with those jurisdictions and health departments, respective health departments. Thank you. Uh, I and Mr. Dillinger, if I could also, I'm sorry, if I could also just comment on the your um, question in, in terms of presumptiveness around hiring. So certainly that's not our intention. Um, we know that we have work to do in terms of this facility and getting it ready to go. We were trying to work to provide the town and the council, you know, with what the projected hiring ramp up would be if we were able to start on June the 21st so that we could most accurately predict you know, what the town could expect from a traffic standpoint. Um, and that also, we also use that information to populate a lot of the conditions that you see before you um, in terms of mitigating traffic concerns in the area. And so the informational sessions I mentioned, those are customary um, for, you know, anytime we're opening a new facility in the area, there's certainly always a lot of interest from individuals that want to come to work for Amazon. And so we do that as just a way to help share details about what the hiring process is like 
um, and what, you know, what a, an individual could expect if they did, you know, get an opportunity and, and to join Amazon and come to work for us. And so I just wanted to clarify that because I don't, I don't want you to feel like we're, you know, assuming, assuming that things are, are moving forward in that time frame. We just simply are trying to provide the council with some good guidance on what, what we would expect if we are, are allowed to open on the 21st. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Dellinger. Okay, I think I'm going to circle back to Mr. Vance in case he has questions or comments. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I would like to say that um, I've worked on, full disclosure, I've worked on uh, with, with the GEDC with getting uh, this project uh, uh, a while back. And uh, and that was, a, it, i just like to say that it was an aggressive project. Uh, uh, Amazon did, it aggressively uh, put a timetable before us, uh, which was an aggressive timetable when it came before us. Uh, the facility, uh, for the most part, has kept that schedule from what I noticed just from the construction standpoint. And uh, I would like to I'd like to ask the town a question, uh, John. Uh, do we do we have a copy of uh, the uh, the, uh, the the critical path for the project, the critical path for the highway piece. No, sir. We do not currently have an, an updated uh, highway schedule. We we've also not asked for one, but um, we don't have one that I can share with you at this time. Okay. All right. And I'm looking at the um, the the site plan for the uh, building, and also the proposed site plan for the placement of the uh the the highway improvements uh starting on june 21st uh, when i heard uh, miss jessica mention about when they wanted to start with the operations of the facility uh i see i, I would correct me on the on the location uh, hunters mark at their entrance they're planning on putting in a traffic light uh there uh on the 21st of june uh, and also, if it's if it's approved, and also a traffic light at uh, going south on uh, John Sausage Road, uh, which will uh, which will I'm assuming, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, will help with the access onto John Sausage Road from those uh, various uh, roads where they have where, where they currently do not have lights. There'd be a better timing and moving of traffic from those uh, various uh, roads anyone that that is the improvements that we have been um that that hillwood has proposed and that um ncdot has agreed uh, would be allowable and some of the the stoplights would be put in on a temporary basis and then would be made uh permanent in the long run so i'll let um i'll let scott add anything to that that he'd like to to clarify i think you covered that very well john thank you Okay, and and the and the signal the signals that are currently proposed have been approved by DOT. The temporary signals that uh, will be um, that we're proposing to have installed and operational by June 21st are currently under review by um, DOT. Um, okay. The final the final signals the final configuration of the road those signals have been reviewed and approved by NTDOT. Okay, so there's a chance the signals will not be approved. I would say yes, there there is a slight chance that the, the signals could not the, the temporary signals would not be approved, but we have been working very closely with DOT um, throughout this process and we feel very confident in their uh, their review and uh, and their approval. Okay, all right. Um let's see here. And uh, one last thing, uh, we, we know that the utilities were a showstopper for the uh, for the project uh, when it came to the construction of the uh, road. And have you has the company purchased all the right of way necessary uh, to construct the highway? Uh, yes, we have. We have one final um, um, temporary construction easement that we are trying to get completed at the East Garner. Um, road connection. Um, there is one uh, holdout that we've been um, in, in contact with or trying to contact over the past several months. And um, 
once we have that piece that piece uh, taken care of, we'll have everything we need there. Um, I will say that we are waiting on DOT to um, to uh, certify some of the right of way that's already been, um, uh, or, or I say right away, some of the easements that have already uh, been uh, handled. And uh, and then I think we're also waiting on the DOT to certify the uh, the condemnation that the town did um, back at the first of the year. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's all my questions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Uh, and just before I go uh, with uh, any other comments, questions from council, uh, this is probably maybe it's a minor point, but I'd be curious to know if uh, John, anybody on our staff, or Scott, or whomever, uh, what what uh, I assume it's a positive impact uh, in terms of the traffic flow out there. Now that the detour on uh, on Garner Road has uh, um, has been taken away, or the, the 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 reason for the detour, the bridge over 40, that's it's been completed. In that road, I haven't ridden by there uh, since it's happened, but uh, that's been completely opened up again. Am I right on that? Yes, sir. That has been opened um, completely. We do not have any information about actual traffic counts or changes in traffic patterns since it reopened last week. Okay. All right. Uh, so no assessments there and it's too early, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, council, um, I will uh, go one more round. I think the official action for us uh, is to consider amendment to SUP SP 1801 site plan condition number two uh, when we come to, I guess, the technical aspect of uh, considering that. But before we do, any other a person care to weigh in with comments or questions? Yes, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, I have a comment and a question for Mr. Martin. Uh, okay. Your question regards to traffic with the bridge being back open. I expect yes. that the uh, traffic has will pick up and has picked up substantially because traffic from the quarry now is not going down to Auburn Nightdale Road and coming back around. They were getting on the belt line in 440 down there. Now they're getting on the belt line and across the road. So that traffic has come back. So you have substantially more uh, dump truck traffic, quarry type traffic, I believe, on, on there. Uh, Mr. Martin, I want to clarify something, please, sir. You stated that the uh, uh, you got, uh, I think, some, have a verbal agreement with the utilities to have the westbound side uh, completed by July 1st and the eastbound side completed by August 1st, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, one of the conditions states that by August 1st, there would be a, a minimum of three lanes. So this two lanes northbound and southbound on Jones Sausage. But the two, the two lanes would be on the west side southbound, wouldn't it? Because you're moving those utilities first. Am I, or am I wrong there? That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the lanes are going to shift. They're, they're not going to be, you know, in their permanent state as of as of August 1st. But what I am saying as of August 1st, we will have three lanes available um, to utilize. And and throughout the construction process, you know, that will have to probably shift back and forth. But we'll, we're, you know, committed to having a full northbound lane and a full southbound lane and a full turn lane open by August 1st. Okay, that clarifies. I just want to make sure because it, I didn't know if it was going to be two lanes going one way and one lane going the other way. That that clarifies it. The one north, one south, and one full tour lane. That that clarifies it. Thank you very Correct. much. Correct. We we wanted to 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 maximize the amount of of storage space where if, if people are turning left into the facility, that uh, they are getting off the road and out of the way of traffic as quickly as possible. Okay. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Okay. Thank you. Any other <laughs> council members? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, the temporary stoplights we were talking about, uh, I think those were two really key issues, at least from the uh, some of the correspondence I had from the f folks living in those two developments there, was being able to get in and out, and that stoplight was most important to them, and not having to wait to the end of the project. Uh, so uh, I guess that's a big hot button with me uh, in this process. I know you guys are doing all you can, and some things you have control of, some things you don't, weather, there's different things. And, but I think those temporary stoplights would be most important uh, as the way I lean on this project because I want to make sure those people can get in and out of 
get in and out of there while all this was going on. And uh, uh, I guess my question is, uh, if I support this, uh, moving this project forward, I certainly want to make sure it was contingent on those lights being temporary as being up and operational on that date. Uh, that's most important to me because I was, that's what I heard from a lot of those folks. And, and, and the others have other concerns, but that was a biggie coming in and out of those developments. And I understand that. I'll toss that back to you and see what you think. We have, um, actually, while I was answering the question earlier, I got buzzed by my, my civil engineer to uh, point out that the, the, the signals themselves, the temporary signals, have been fundamentally approved by, by the, the, the DOT. At this point, we're working on kind of the timing of the lights um, and whether or not we can actually, um, with, the, with the signals that we're using, whether we can tie the two together. So we're, we're trying to come up with some options and some plans there, but um, from, from a standpoint of, of actually getting them on site, we've already placed the order for them. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we expect them to, to show up on site within the next two weeks. And then it's just a matter of turning them on and program, programming them appropriately. Okay. So you feel comfortable with that timeline then? I do. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Um, other council members on this oh, round? Yes, sir. I have a couple of comments. Um, <laughs> the the most recent uh, when Mr. Matthews was talking about the stoplights that gives me a little bit of heartburn about the the stoplights are have been ordered and will be here in two weeks because I I serve on a, a a private board where something was ordered and was delayed and then it was wrong and then it was delayed and it threw the project off quite a bit that that makes me nervous. Um, the other thing that I will say is that I, I absolutely want to see this facility open. Uh, this is going to bring so many much needed jobs to the area. Um, I want to, you know, want us to work together to do what we can. On the other hand, it's going to create a, a minimum of four times the amount of traffic that that road has handled uh, when ConAgra was up and running. I think when before the tragedy happened, their employment uh, numbers were about 400. And I believe when we were told that Amazon would employ a minimum of 1,500. So it's a catch-22. I, I just, um, uh, I'm, I'm sitting on both sides of that fence because we need those jobs. People need jobs. And, uh, but we're also going to be dealing with a whole lot more traffic. And uh, I, I guess what I want is more assurances that that roadway will be traversable without driving everybody completely crazy. Mr. Mayor, sure, I, and, and I, I have to, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Hold it just a minute to Mr. Okay. Matthews. Uh, I understand the concern there. And, and uh, you know, in, in terms of your, your comment about ordering things and not, them not showing up right, that, that happens sometimes. And I think, you know, we, what we would do there at that point is is expect the, the town since we wouldn't be able to meet this this condition that we we put out there that the, these temporary signals we would be up and running um, that we wouldn't expect the town to issue the TCO by that day. Um, I, I think I think the expectation would be for us to have these these signals up and operational and um, and until then if the, the the town has the option to not issue the TCO. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Uh, I'll, I understand. I think Kathy and I are looking at the same, same scenario here. And uh, if, uh, if we could make this uh, temporary CO contingent on those lights being temporary up and operational before the issuance of that temporary uh, CO, that would make me feel a whole lot better. And I think that's kind of where she was going with this thing. Okay. Right. Same here. Okay, that might can we, be considered. We can, live with, we can live with that. Okay. okay. I'll say that might could be considered in any ultimate motion that uh, that we ask the council to vote on. So, um, uh, okay. Other other comments or questions uh, before we move to a decision on this? I do, Miss Mr. Mayor. I do, and following uh, Elmo. Elmo, so Elmo's questions and some of his expertise on the, the timing and workflow and working with DOT on certain issues. Um, I'm 
concerned about the short term, but I'm also concerned about the long term. And one of the long term concerns I have is the reputation of Garner is being backed into a corner to get economic development projects done. Now, in five years, Amazon will be operational. In two years, in three years, it'll be here. It'll be operational. It'll be good for the town. But what a, there are some long-term repercussions for us having terms that the citizens demanded of us and that we promised on multiple occasions to adhere to. And we often wonder why people have little trust in government. And we wonder why they don't, their elected officials don't stick to their word. And it's situations like this that are the reason. And it's not that Amazon's bad for Garner or bad. That's not really the issue for me. It's sticking to your word. And there are, there can be accommodations that can be made. And I, at this point, I have some, I think, some legal questions in, on how the change, the very specific change we're going to vote on melds with some of the already legal stuff that's in place and how it changes what we do and do not have flexibility to do. I also, based on the concern, the lengthy concern from the residents along Jones Sausage Road, I almost want to talk with them, some of them personally, to see what would they be, ex what would they accept? And they have read the changes that have been proposed, the temporary changes, and they have rejected them. And is there a compromise that they could envision? I would like to know if there's something they would want. And to me, that's transparency. That's representation. That's sticking to your word. And I think any good corporate partner would understand the need to do that and to in allow its elected officials to engage with the residents to make these type of huge changes when such huge promises were made an effort was made to secure them and they were agreed upon. I don't think that the people of Garner are intransigent uh, and won't change their mind and immutable in what they think, but the plan that's been presented, they have clear reservations about. And I think a lot of it has to do with the timeline at which these decisions have been uh, put upon us as a council. Uh, if it could have been presented sooner and more engagement come sooner, I think that we, we wouldn't be operating from the position of having our backs against the wall. And Mr. Singleton brings up multiple instances where there have been actions where the council has had to act with its back against the wall. And no one likes to do it because we want to represent people properly and we want what's best for the town in the long term. Long term, the decision we make here is going to really be negligible from an economic development standpoint, from an infrastructure standpoint. But in the long term, it matters when it comes to the credibility of the town and its economic development partners and the opportunities they present that they believe what we say when we tell them something. That matters a lot for the next partners that come into town and want to do business. And the citizens believing us when we say, oh, you want this, you've advocated for it, now you have it, we will, we will stick to that. Again, my position is not that we have to stick to it, to the letter of the law, and, which is in our favor, but that we have to work better, even on this aggressive timeline now of June 21st, to see if there is a, are more conditions and terms that the citizens would, uh, that are most greatly impacted, everyone's impacted because the road is so heavily traveled, but the ones that are most greatly impacted can live with. So that, that's, and the lights are one of those issues and all these all these things fall to us. When the pieces don't fall into place moving forward, it falls on us. It's our responsibility. When that road's not done until December, yeah, there's a little bit of money here. Or it's not done until January for whatever reason. Who knows what? Could be pandemic explodes again and you can't do any road work. Could be ice storm. Who knows? 
but that falls to us and it is the burden the burden falls on the residents i'll i'll yield for for now mr mayor thank you very much okay. thank you thank you mr challenger okay um anybody care to respond uh here or if not i'll move to another person or two that i want to hear from well this, mr uh Dellinger hit spot on we sit here and have some recent meetings amongst the council members where we've complained about being forced into a corner when staff brings us something and we got this brought to us two weeks ago and we're gonna make a decision that's gonna impact everyone who drives on that road i don't understand how this is even a discussion Five people voted on this. Three of them are sitting here. I'm looking at two of them. The mayor can't vote now. Me and Ms. Berenger can. The applicant agreed to it. We voted for it. Next. I don't understand why that's an issue. We wouldn't let Vic County School open to Brown Road Elementary until the road was complete. We wouldn't let them open Vandor Springs Road until the road was complete. Heck, we couldn't open Town Hall until the road was complete. We can't open the rec center until the road is complete. What are we waiting on? A utility company so we can put a, a, a guardrail on the 50, Highway 50 exit ramp. I don't understand why we're sitting here having this issue. Mr. Dellinger is exactly right. This is how people get pissed off at elected officials when they don't do what they say they were going to do and what the citizens demanded of them. This is how people lose trust in elected officials. Y'all want to vote for it, three of you? Knock yourself right on out. But based on our experience in the last two to three years on construction projects, Despite the guarantees that Mr. Martin and Hillwood and Amazon can give, the chances of this road being finished by September 30th, barring some kind of unforeseen circumstance, is not good. Let's just be honest. Many road, complete, road projects are not completed on a timely basis recently. Just saying that. So there it is. I had it. Uh, I, I just, I'm frustrated that we're even having this and again. Two weeks to make a decision. It's brought to us to make a decision. And the residents, he, Mr. Dellinger's right again, got forced into making their comments, and we've really had no correspondence with them just based off their comments. And we know they're not very happy about it. So you told them that we were going to do something, we put the condition on there. Now we want to amend the condition. That's just not good government. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Singleton. Um, all right. Um, at some point, I want to give Mr. Stallings, who is our economic development director, uh, who's who's been involved with this uh, process for a long time? An opportunity just to. I'm not asking him to weigh on e either side, but if he cares to make any comments, I know. Uh, uh, appreciate the effort he has put in uh, to all of this. So, Mr. Stallings, anything you care to say? If you don't want to say anything, that's okay too. I know I appreciate Mr. Mayor and appreciate um, the debate is going back and forth. I think really it's a decision. Uh, at the council's feet. Uh, either way, we'll be supportive on the economic development department to ensure this project comes to fruition. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, council, um, I think we've aired this pretty thoroughly, um, but uh, I will uh, give you, uh, if anybody else wants to weigh in, I think most people have, um, but I'll give you one more opportunity before I'll ask you to uh, Consider the action before you through a formal uh, motion and, and a vote. Anybody Mr. else? Mayor, go ahead. I, I would actually like to move that we continue this so that we can have some engagement with uh, with residents. Uh, I hear Mr. Singleton is, is very uh, his position is very firm, um, and, and I'm leaning that direction. Um, but I'd also feel compelled to let the residents have an opportunity to see if uh, there are any conditions at which they would be willing to compromise. So my motion is to uh, continue this discussion. We could, I uh, have to ask the um, town attorney, again, I'm not opposed to uh, scheduling at some point a special uh, session to discuss just this. So that we do have a sort of a time limit. I understand Amazon and developer are on a, a timetable, so we don't want to delay it out to our next council meeting. That's pretty far out. Um, so I ask the attorney, what kind, what, how do I need to word such a motion? 
Mr. Baggett, I will be pleased to hear from you, sir. And maybe just as he's commenting, Mr. Dellinger, I, I don't know, I, obviously at some point, I think if, if we move forward on this motion, we will, I guess, sort of have to clarify that's uh, true. What, what you're intending in, as relates to further interaction with the residents and how, what, what method or what form that would take. As to the delay, you just need to merely move that this action be continued to a later time. Now, when it's taken up, could be at any regular meeting or a special meeting on 48 hours notice. Now, whatever else you may want to add to the motion in terms of neighborhood involvement, you can, but the, the crux of it is merely to continue this matter to a later time. And then the council uh, informally by talking to each other will decide, or the mayor will decide when to call a special meeting if you want to do that before the next regular meeting. And then you can make a decision one way or the other. Okay, thank so you, I'll, sir. I'll, I'll make that motion to the council to move to continue this uh, matter to a later time. Okay. Second. Second. All right, they have a motion properly made and seconded to uh, move to continue to a separate time. Um, before the vote, uh, any other comments, questions on the motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, just put in a couple of two cents worth here. And I respect all my fellow councilmen as I always say, you're gonna be my best friends after this night, so will. I don't take anything personally. Uh, but this is one tremendous project. Uh, we've had input, uh, granted uh, it's maybe been a little quicker than we might have wanted, and I understand that. But for the most part, we've got excellent input uh, from people on the road as well as in those two housing developments because we've all read it and had personal communications. And those that come to me, I responded back to them. And um, so, uh, uh, you know, all we're gonna, what I see here, if we do this, this could go on, be prolonged, everything's gonna be pushed back. And even then, we still gotta come back with the question. And, uh, um, and, like, like I said, uh, I respect my two council members for what they want to do, and uh, but uh, I certainly hope that we can go ahead and move forward on this project because uh, there's so much involved here. Yes, there is not just on a monetary gain, but potential over 2,400 jobs at a time they're really needed to a major industry coming into our area with economic development. We can't even put a, a price tag on tonight, and uh, just to push it back, prolong it longer. I don't know that it's going to accomplish that much. You might get a little extra feedback, but I think we received pretty much the bulk of the feedback from those people generally concerned. And those that didn't, you know, touch back base with us, you know, some people just don't matter with them. It's just the nature of the way it is. And, uh, but those that, that had an idea or thought they responded. So I would really like to see us move forward and not prolong, prolong this thing any longer. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other Mr. council Mayor? member? Yeah, briefly. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I would like to just talk to Ms. speak at Mr. Matthews' point, and um, I, I understand his position, and uh, but I do have some I do have some legal questions about what um, options will be left for us if we do approve this. Um, I so I'm just not clear on some of the implications it has on our flexibility. So it's that part and the um, citizen response part that I'd like to have a little bit more time to absorb before uh, we take this matter up formally. I just don't understand all the repercussions um, that are we're laying out for ourselves. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Any other comments before we vote? Observations. <laughs> If Mr. Mayor, if we if we continue this um, this discussion, will that special call meeting be next week? If so, that's that's only one more week. Um, so is that is that what we are talking about doing? Is continuing it, and getting more information, and then taking it up again next week in a special call session, or would it be added to the uh, June sixteenth meeting? Um. Uh, Mr. Baggett can weigh, uh, weigh in on this, but uh, I, I believe this council obviously could uh, 
uh, decide if it approves the motion to continue uh, when it wants to take up the matter again, or it could leave the matter open. Uh, the mayor could weigh in on that. Uh, our next regular meeting is on the uh, 16th. Um, and of course, uh, it's already been mentioned that we could uh, hold a special session just to consider this matter. Um, my personal inclination would be to uh, to not schedule it probably sooner than our next regular meeting, but uh, uh, that's to give ample time to to pursue any of the issues that have been raised here. Um, well, I don't have any desire to push it on indefinitely either. I, I want it to get resolved and I want Amazon to be able to get their business up and running. Um, but I, I am inclined to to move to go with uh, continuing and getting some more input, as Mr. Dellinger said about are there uh, some conditions that the residents would be willing to to consider. Uh, give them a voice. We certainly are the body who makes the decision, but uh, it would build confidence and I believe in the residents, even if we wind up disagreeing ultimately and moving forward with a temporary CO. Um, so for what it's worth. Okay. Anybody Mr. Else Mayor, 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 Mayor Marshall. Yeah. I'll, I'll Let's see. I believe I'm recognized Mr. Vance, and then I'll go to Mr. Dickerson or uh, yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say also that uh, there are there are a number of things that are still floating uh, in reference to what has been provided to us. One, with the definite of the signals, the definite of the purchase of the right of way, and uh, I don't know what was shown to the public if they saw this, where the proposed signals are being proposed and how that will help them go in and out. So, and plus, it was a a quick period for the public to respond on something. Uh, so I I don't see uh, an issue from my position of a little bit more time to have that public engagement and, uh, and explain to the public clearly what is being proposed and what is being proposed as mitigation for uh, not being uh, meeting the schedule. Uh, so I'm in line with uh, with that, uh, with that uh, push, push, I hate to say push it down the road, but with that uh, extra time for public engagement to get a better feel and, and to better explain to the public what's happening here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Dixon, did I hear you, uh, is, is, is something you wanted to weigh in on? Yes, yes, Mayor Marshburn. Um, as to the date of June the 16th, that will be our uh, the first in-person uh, meeting we've had in a while. Um, we will have some public hearings on that meeting. Um, I think there will be smaller crowds than we typically have for some public hearings, but we are having to work out special conditions with the council room and other, other spaces we have to create social distancing. Um, so I would, I would like to kind of get some direction on what type of um, format the resident input would be because it could provide. It could. It could prove difficult to have it uh, in person if a good number of residents show up. We would have well, to make. Let me say, if we're going to have public engagement, the public needs to speak to us. They don't need to do no virtual stuff with this. They need to be allowed at a special meeting. One might next week, next Tuesday. That gives them a week if we announce it tomorrow. Plenty of time to come. You figure out how to do it again. If they could get people going to a grocery store and, and socially distance them, waiting outside to come in and, and go shopping, we can figure that out at town hall. And after they speak, they can be uh, can exit. But the public engagement that Mr. Dellinger's talked about needs to be engagement in person. Oh, I agree. So you can see them and hear them. And if you have it at a separate meeting, that's the only people that would be there. And you know, if it's twenty people, if it's thirty people, we'll figure it out and we'll space them out. Okay, um, and yeah, both both valid points. I understand um, the council hasn't technically waited on this, but we are anticipating that our next meeting we will go back to an in what I call an in person meeting. It'll be on the 16th. So there are some logistics to work out, and as you point out, Mr. Singleton, there they they can be done. Um, uh, but um, you know, it, it'll it'll be a little more challenging than it would be under shall I say more normal circumstances. Mr. Uh, Mayor, if I may, yes. I. I I would not, I would actually be more in favor of doing a special 
session exclusively for this issue uh, next week. So that way we can, people can sign up. We'll know how many people are going to come. We can set the spacing and the time um, of the meeting. And I think too, waiting for the, waiting to the 16th is a little late. Um, I think for the developer and Amazon, I, I know they want it to be even sooner, um, but I think to try to be accommodating uh, potentially to their date that sometime next week would probably serve everyone better and also have a concentrated meeting just for this purpose. Okay. I'd agree with that. So, uh, um, Mr. Baggett, tell me if I'm correct, uh, parliamentary wise, uh, since Mr. Dellinger made the motion, I guess, uh, Mr. Dellinger, if you care to amend the motion by continuing to a specific date, that goes ahead and sets the date as of now. Is that what you're inclined to do? Uh, I, I think I can leave the motion as it is, and then we can agree, if we're all in agreement that that is what we want to do, we can set that meeting up on our own after this meeting. Okay. That's correct. Okay, all right. All right, I think I sense that the council is ready to vote on the motion. Essentially, the motion is to continue this discussion uh, until a future date uh, to be ter uh, to be determined. Am I right, Mr. Baggett? Yes, that's how I understood it. Okay, so the motion has been properly made, and I believe. Let me see. Did I did did Mr. Singleton second the motion or not, Mr. Singleton? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so yeah, and then we had all our discussion. So the motion's been on the floor for a while. So, uh, council, uh, those of you who are in favor of the motion that has been properly made, please vote by saying aye. 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 If there are any in opposition to the motion, please vote by saying no. Okay, so the motion carries to continue the matter to a date yet to be determined. And uh, um, that will be worked out uh, in the very near future, I believe. And uh, that'll be a special called meeting for the purpose of discussing this issue. Does that sound right, Mr. Baggett? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and the... Basic requirement we have time wise, time wise is to give a 48 hour notice before the meeting. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Mr. Mayor, question, please. Okay. Uh, uh, if Mr. Dillinger would consider, and I, I'm support, I supported his motion here, uh, if we could do this next week, uh, I think it would be good. I think a Tuesday would be fine, devote it just to that, this one item. And as you said, that'll give the, the company time to move on. And that'll give us the Tuesday of next week, ample time to put the word out. People can come in, like Mr. Singleton said, and uh, chat with us in person. And I would like to encourage us to look at Tuesday of next week. Okay, uh, and so I understand that we don't have to actually decide that uh, right now. Uh, we spent considerable time on this, but, uh, but uh, certainly your recommendation, I think, would uh, be considered, uh, Mr. Matthews, in terms of a potential special date. We'll see if there's any problem well, timing-wise. Mr. Mayor, I think the time, I think the, this is the appropriate time because citizens who are concerned about this are watching us. So if you yeah. tell them it's next Tuesday at 7 o'clock, they'll know it's next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And then <laughs> they know that. I'm trying to, I don't know how much easier they can get about informing them. Also, I would hope that anyone who's contacted Town Hall with an email or a message or in person, that staff would, would send them a correspondence also. But I mean, if it can be next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Then next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we should go ahead and announce it so the people watching it know it's when it is. That way we give them plenty of time. Is it in a day and a half or two days or 48 hours? It gives them plenty of time for notice. I agree. Hey, I, I, I accept your point, Mr. Singleton. My only reason for hesitation was uh, whether or not there's merit in, in, in waiting just to make sure there aren't any other conflicts that we are unaware of right now. But uh, I'm sure if uh, if uh, the town manager was aware of any conflicts, he would weigh in on that. So, uh, barring that, if the council wants to go ahead and set the date, then we can certainly do that. Mr. Manager, that's uh, not a logistical problem for any. I don't have any conflicts on my end. Um, John, we have any planning board or any other? No, sir. They will meet the uh, the next Monday night. So that particular night is not a conflict for any. Okay, I think we're fine from a staff okay. All right. standpoint. All right. 
All right. I don't know, uh, Mr. Baker. Do we need to take a formal uh, vote on that, or well, there are different ways, different ways to schedule a meeting, and this is certainly one of them. Okay. Yes, right. you need to vote if you want to do that now. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, floor is open for a motion uh, that we um, that we have this special call meeting on Tuesday of next week, which is I'm trying to find my calendar. What's that? The eighth. Tonight. It's the ninth. Excuse me. Okay. The 9th of June at seven o'clock. At town hall. Yes. Okay. At so moved. So moved. Okay. Well, so moved. Second. 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 Not second. Moved, moved in second. Can I just uh, say? Yes. Can we be somewhat flexible on the location, depending on the number of people that respond they may attend? But we'll preliminary have it at town hall unless we need to move it somewhere larger. Where would that be? G pack possibly. Okay. Well, you need to set the location at least 48 hours in advance. Right, right. We can do that. Okay. Sooner would be better. Okay. Yeah. I think we ought to give the staff flexibility to, to determine where they believe the uh, most appropriate uh, location should be given our town facilities and how many people we anticipate being there. Let me yeah, over 200 residents. Okay. I'd like to add just one point of consideration, and it may be negligible, but I do want to add it. Uh, the GPAC, uh, that auditorium, the building also houses many, many, many senior citizens, and we don't want to do anything whatsoever to uh, introduce any kinds of germs or viruses that might be detrimental to them, regardless whether they're in the room or not. Okay, so noted. Um, so... The motion before the council is to hold this special meeting next Tuesday uh, at a location to be determined, uh, either town hall or one of our other facilities that would accommodate uh, the number of people who will want to attend this in person. So uh, motion been properly made uh, and seconded. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please vote aye. 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 Uh, any, any opposed, no. And the motion carries. So... Um, I'll be talking further with uh, Mr. Dickerson and others uh, about the location so we can go ahead and pin that down and, and get that out to the public as soon as possible. Mr. Mayor, could the overflow go into our training room via TV? Sure, that, 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 that's obviously one of the things that will be considered, uh, Mr. Matthews, but, okay. but even that may have some limitations depending on how many people we anticipate. So right. yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to work something out, but uh, just requires some further uh, anytime your social distancing is always uh, requires some 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 further determination of what's the best way to do that. Mr. Manager, anything further on on that at this point? Uh, something occurs to me. Okay, Mr. Baggett. If the curfew is still in effect, there's a problem. Uh, at we don't. this point, uh, I don't know if you talk about the most recent curfew that uh, uh, the the one that the mayor. That that's only Raleigh. That's not yeah, Wake County. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Never, okay. All right. Never. <laughs> okay. Thanks, sir. All right. So so ordered uh, in council uh, schedule calendars uh, accordingly, and you'll be given a reminder on that. I'm sure. Um, I believe we've exhausted that option, and thank you, council, uh, for your input, and to our friends at uh, Hillwood and Amazon, um, we thank you for your time this evening. And uh, you, you, you've heard the decision of the council and uh, stay in touch. We will, uh, we, will be, um, we will be talking with you further, no doubt. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. You, Mr. Mayor, Mayor and council. We appreciate it. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, council members. Okay, all right. Thank you all. Uh, council, uh, let me see. I know I went longer than perhaps I should have the previous time without a... Without a a break, but uh, we're getting near the end of our uh, agenda. I think that won't take too much longer. And Unknown we have participant a is now exiting. Okay, somebody's exiting. So uh, I tell you what, why don't we do this? Let's let's finish the regular agenda, and then when we go into closed session, we'll take uh, uh, obviously a break at that point in time uh, to give you uh, uh, to, to uh, give you a little breakdown. Is that okay? That's sure it's good. All right, we're at committee reports. Uh, I'm not aware of any committees that have met. Are there any, Mr. Manager or anybody else? Mr. Mayor, uh, I just want to 
point out that Mr. Vance and I will be working with Stella to uh, fill some committee and board uh, vacancies that will be coming up June 30th. So I just want to let everyone know we'll be in the process of doing that through June. Okay. I haven't figured out exactly how yet, but we're working on it. Okay, that's the HR committee, I believe, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Marshburn, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, the um, staff is working to um, try to complete some additional work that will need to come to Public Works Committee. And so we'll be reaching out to the Public Works Committee members um, in the next week or so to try to schedule a date um, for a Public Works Committee meeting. We just don't have that firm uh, enough tonight to be able to ask for scheduling. Okay. Thank you, John. John, question. Mr. Mayor, question for John. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what time do you typically have those meetings? What time of day? Public Works Committee? Yes. That would be at the discretion of the committee members. Okay. All right. Whatever whatever works for best for them is what we've typically done. Okay. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. And remind me, let me see. I, I, I probably need to refer to my file. Is that is that Mr. Vance and Mr. Uh, Singleton? Singleton? Yes, it yes. is. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I know both with your with your work schedules, uh, you'll need to get together with John and uh, and and agree on a time. I'm sure that works. Uh, I'm at manager reports, uh, Mr. Dickerson. All I have is what's in your packet, the uh, Garner Info report. Okay. Any, any council member have any questions for the town manager? Hearing none, we will go to Mr. Uh, Mr. Baggett for any report the attorney care can make. No, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, let's do a fairly quick, uh, shall we do a round robin for council reports? And uh, I'll start with uh, Mr. Dellinger. Uh, only one thing, just want to... Um, give a shout out to all of the folks in and around Raleigh who are protesting for social justice and also a shout out to all of our um, police officers who are also doing their job. Uh, say, going along with Mr. Vance's um, statements earlier, I hope we can all work together to get through this and be better at the other end of it. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Dellinger. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Matthews. I just want—I just want to get a point of clarification for our council meeting on Wednesday. I had one time. Y'all were checking around a couple other times. What officially time are we meeting Wednesday? <laughs> okay, the official time is we we will have from eight thirty to nine, just basically refreshments and get settled in. But okay. the actual meeting will officially start at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. OK, thank you. That will go till noon or until council has finished this business for the day. Got you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay. And as before, that will be in the training room on the second floor of the uh, town hall, right? Mr. Manager. Uh, oh, that meeting is scheduled to be in the council room, just like yeah. the previous budget meeting. Right. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking about. Okay, thank you. What is everybody going to wear? I don't want to show up my tie and I'm going to close. Somebody want to clarify that. Yeah. You have love that, I know. What, what you have on the right field is a perfect. I'm dressed. I'm dressed. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're wearing shorts tonight, Phil, but if your shirt's fine. For Wednesday. <laughs> okay. You don't need to know the rest. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, uh, okay. That's, that's, I won't uh, uh, so let, let's get no this back field. on track. No um, okay, yeah. I, I, tend to, I, I tend to be a tie person, so don't be shocked if I come that way. But I respect what you're what you're saying to you. So with that, I'm, since Mr. I'm sorry. I'm not wearing a tie. Okay, I, I, I would hope not. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Singleton, uh, your turn. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. I want to uh, again thank uh, Public Works for all the. Uh, Work and time they spent this year with the spring cleanup. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. that was delay with the uh, with the shutdown, and then they had of course smaller crews trying to uh, play do smart because in case you know someone contacted and they had to shut down, they would have another crew available. So I appreciate their hard work on uh, the spring cleanup. A lot of a lot of uh, I talked to Mr. Jones at our budget session, and he said that this year's cleanup would be the largest by quantity and weight again uh, as previous. And I think the delay. 
didn't uh, certainly help with that because people kept adding to their piles. So again, I appreciate um, getting my hat to the folks at Public Works uh, for the hard work and the time they took. Our citizens appreciate that. Not every town in this area does what we do in the spring and the fall, you know, particularly the spring unrestricted trash pickup. So thanks to them and thanks uh, thanks for the council and the staff for working on, on that because the citizens sure do appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Singleton. Well stated, cheering sure enough. Uh, Ms. Beringer. Uh, I would echo Mr. Singleton's remarks. I know that was a lot, a lot of work, and <clears throat> there were, <clears throat> pardon me, many instances where uh, trash piles were added to and added to. So yeah, they, they did a lot more work than is obvious. So um, thank you to, to Public Works. And I would also, I'm the one who's always asking about get things getting mowed and the access onto Highway 70 from Umstead Drive off of 50. Both sides of the road there um, need mowing badly. So when yes. they can get to it, that would be really good. But it's, it looks terrible. And it's all just a comedy of errors. That's what's happened lately. But it, it does need to be done. So if we can make a note of that. OK, thank you very much. Um, I believe, Mr. Vance, uh, your opportunity, sir. Oh, yes. Um, I'd like to echo what I've heard here. Uh, this has been a very challenging year. A lot of things have been going on, and uh, the, the pressure of everything has shown uh, the abilities of our staff and our various departments to get it done under that pressure, under adverse circumstances. And um, I'm just um, happy to be a part of the Garner team uh, just to see with how we're working together through the various obstacles we have to work through. And I know that we'll be better because of what we're experiencing right now when all this comes to a settled, settling point. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you all. I believe I covered everybody. And uh, the mayor would just like to say that uh, I mentioned earlier the uh, proclamation for the high school class of 2020. Uh, many of you may know that uh, there will be a uh, high school 2020 graduation class parade this Saturday. Uh, I believe it's going to be starting at 2 o'clock. The town has obviously uh, agreed to assist uh, with the logistics of that. And uh, your mayor is, uh, is going to be uh, having an opportunity to participate right in the parade. And for those of you who may be interested, I have invited the uh, former mayor to oh. ride along with me in that. Oh, good. So, um, good. so uh, right. if you want to see your current mayor and your former mayor, you can uh, see I'll us. Ride, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> sure, Phil, you can ride with me. Yeah. Okay, I want I want you all to take pictures. I'm afraid I'll be out of town, and I don't I don't want to miss it. Please take pictures. Okay, I'm sure somebody will. I'm not sure who, but. Uh, uh, I could take a selfie, I guess. Um, on a more serious note, uh, I would say that uh, I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank the citizens of Garner and and all of our council. Uh, we 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 we've been uh, through a difficult time with the COVID nineteen. Uh, I'd like to think that most of our residents uh, have heard and heeded uh, the restrictions that have been imposed, and hopefully we are on the other side, if that's a good thing of this, but it has not gone away from all I hear. So I encourage all of us to continue. I still try to uh, wear a mask when I go into public places and uh, be, be aware of those uh, recommendations of things that we still all need to do uh, to hopefully uh, defeat this thing once and for all. Um, and the other thing I would say is, uh, as, as has been alluded to, um, obviously there have been uh, tragedies that have occurred in our country, uh, and certainly, uh, the, uh, the, the, the death of the gentleman up in, uh, Minneapolis is, is on everybody's mind. Um, your mayor, along with a number of other mayors from, uh, the state of North Carolina, and it wasn't initiated by me, have signed a statement that I won't take time to read now, but in essence, it acknowledges, uh, uh, the terrible tragedy that occurred as it relates to Mr. George Floyd admonishes us all uh, at all levels of our uh, of our municipal government to give attention to systemic racism and other issues that are still very much in need of attention and discussion. And I would just say, as your mayor, my intent is to try to use what influence I have to uh, 
to bring about reconciliation where and when we can. And I encourage all of our citizens in this town to do likewise. Um, thank you. That's all I have. Unless anybody has a, a final thought before, I'll ask you to move that we go into closed session pursuant to the statutes in your agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move we go into closed session pursuant to statute 1433118.11, subset A, subset 3, to consult with the town attorney regarding litigation. Second. Okay, motion been properly made and seconded. Uh, hearing no discussion. The, uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 There is no opposition. So be it. I'm going to declare a recess of 10 minutes. Uh, and then we will come back to closed session at that point in time. So about five after nine or so. Okay, thank you for your indulgence. Uh, we are now back in open session. The council went into closed session, uh, pursuant to general statutes uh, uh, 143318 dash, excuse me, uh, uh, dot 11A3 to consult with uh, attorneys uh, in regards to uh, some litigation and other uh, information. And the council received uh, reports and um, um, uh, heard uh, processes uh, going forward that uh, we will consider at a future date. Uh, any other business to come before the council at this time? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn. So moved. <coughs> so moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Motion properly made and seconded that uh, we adjourn uh, this meeting. All the council members in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 And of course, there is no opposition. So uh, <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for your indulgence this evening. I appreciate your time. Um, 